Welcome back to Stuttgart, Germany and the 2007 Artistic Gymnastic World Championships. Our next competition here in Stuttgart is the men's all-around final. And Lori, in this age of specialization, fewer gymnasts are actually able to compete on all six apparatus, at least at a world-class level. Absolutely, Brenda. The all-around competition is almost a specialty in itself. It takes tremendous dedication for these athletes to train at a high level across six events and find that balance between the big difficulty and consistency, which is what it takes to be successful in the all-around. A maximum of two athletes per country can make it through to the finals, and Canada has qualified too. Casey Sandy qualified, and we saw what a huge role he played in the success of the team, and now he gets a shot at his first chance at competing in an all-around final at a World Championships. But David Kikuchi, for him, this is his second opportunity, and he's known as Mr. Dependable, very consistent, and that's going to be the key to his success here. And Canadians Casey Sandy and David Kikuchi find themselves in the same rotation in this men's all-around final. David finished 20th in this competition at the 2003 World Championships and his goal today is to improve on that performance. He mentioned at the top of the show that intimidation will not be a factor here. He has competed for many years with the top athletes. Competing in Yurchenko, double twist here. Very clean in the air. And that score would be better than his qualification score on vault, so he will be happy he saw improvement from the qualification round. Here's the other Canadian in the final, Casey Sandy of Brampton, Ontario. Vault is the highest scoring apparatus in gymnastics, so it's a good place for the Canadians to start things off. Casey's doing the same vault. We just saw David perform a 6.2 in the A score, a little bit more height and distance on that vault. It should score fairly high. With a conservative difficulty, a very good score there for Casey Sandy. This is the young German star, 19-year-old Fabian Hambuchen. He won the bronze medal in the all-around final at last year's World Championships. And Lori, Fabian has been treated in some ways like a rock star here in Stuttgart this week. And he's handled the pressure of the media so well. Staying focused in competition. Maintaining a high level here. Opening with a double-twisting double layout. That straight body position makes it that much more difficult. Combination of three flight elements there. Finishing with a one and three quarter rollout. Third combination pass. A little bit of a struggle on the landing. And a little bit sideways in his direction. Fourth tumbling pass in a row. That's called a tucked Thomas. Adding a little finesse and flair to the routine with his flares to handstand, back into his flares. And Lori, it's rare to see a gymnast so young do so well in an event like this. That the top male all-around gymnasts usually peak in their mid-20s. You see the male gymnasts peak a little bit later than the females, uh, and part of that is that they, they really uh, physically become strong enough later in life uh, to be able to do some of these powerful elements. Out on the landing of the double pike, but overall a pretty strong routine to start. Fabian, a gymnast that many think will contend for a title here. As we mentioned, he finished third at the Worlds a year ago. He had a slight pop problem in this combination pass. Take a look at the twisting elements. Each one is not fully completed, and that is why he had that sideways direction problem and a step out on the landing, about three-tenths deduction there. Fabian, a big reason the Germans finished third in the men's team competition, a huge accomplishment for this country. And talking about that team competition, it was less than 24 hours ago. Uh, that's a tough turnover for these men to come out here and compete six events today. I think uh, several of the athletes will see that they are tired. And 14.4, rather 15.475, a good score for Fabian Hambushin. China's Liang Fuliang for many years has competed in the shadow of his more successful teammate Yang Wei. But Liang is also a contender for the title. Here he finished seventh at the all-around competition at the 2005 Worlds. Opening with an extremely clean and difficult full twisting double layout. Makes it look easy. 
front double, front full, front one and three quarter. Floor is his best event. He won the bronze medal on floor at the 05 Worlds. It's a second rollout element and a cartwheel to the corner. The judges are starting to deduct now for just simple steps into the corner. They want to see them do something a little more artistic or with some gymnastics value to it. Excellent job with his flares to handstand, pirouette, flares into a split position. The men are required to show forward, backward, and sideways tumbling or an Arabian skill as well as non-acrobatic elements like those flares. He has 10 seconds to complete his final tumbling pass. Two and a half twists. Extremely clean throughout this entire routine. One thing that people may notice is that there is no music accompanying the men's exercises, where the women, there is music accompanying the floor exercise. It's the way it's always been. Music means more dance and choreography, and that tends to be more feminine, which is something that the women are looking for. For the men, it's about power and big tumbling, like this opening pass of the double layout with a full twist. And, and you see uh, more of those static positions by the men. Liang Fu Liang uh, gets off to a great start here. Uh, really, on your first rotation, you want to build some momentum, build some confidence, because it's a long day. The men must compete on six events compared to women who compete on four. And his score, 15.850, a good way to start this competition for the Chinese gymnasts. Liang looked a little flat, a little low on that front one and three quarters. Six events means a tremendous amount of stamina and endurance is needed in this competition. Keep in mind, the men competed in the fi team final less than 24 hours ago. Back to vault, and this is Filippo Day of Croatia. Sukahara, double twist, two hops on the landing. He will certainly benefit from starting on vault. Overall, this is a pretty clean vault in the air. Double twist. And that is an excellent score for the Croatian gymnast of 15.725. Here is Korea's Yang tae Yoon. And he won the Olympic bronze medalist in 2004 in this competition. 27 years old, he competed in the last Olympics under the old code. He's done an excellent job of upgrading his routines to meet the demands of this new code. And he had a rough qualifying round, just barely made it into this final. Hasn't looked his confident self, but he sure does after that vault. It would score 16.1. So after the first rotation, Yang Tae Yung has the lead by virtue of the high scoring nature of vault. Liang Fu Liang's spectacular floor exercise puts him in second place. Coming up next, rotation number two. Fall River Nova Scotia's David Kikuchi has been the backbone of the Canadian men's gymnastics team for several years now. And David, you were practically born and raised in a gym. Now you're 27 years old. That's a long time in a sport like gymnastics. Yeah, well, it's been, my, both of my parents are gymnastics coaches and my father is still my coach. He was here uh, helping me out. And uh, both my sisters are involved in gymnastics a little bit. And, uh, last year I got married to, to a gymnast and, and, yeah, and she was in the Olympics as well. So it's been a really big part of my life and part of my family, but I've enjoyed all of it and, and it's been great so far. Well, the Canadian men's team qualified a team for the Olympics next summer. And, you know, a lot of people think of gymnastics as a very individual sport, but this Canadian men's team really really showed in a lot of ways that it has an enormous amount of team chemistry and team spirit. Mm -hmm. Well, it is, it is an individual sport. You're not uh, passing anything, the puck to anybody or anything like that. You're not depending on someone to be in a certain place at a certain time, but uh, we've come together as a team because we have a, a common goal of qualifying the team to the Olympics, and we've been training for, for three years for this, and even before that, that's been our main goal of the program. And, and to have accomplished that goal a couple days ago is, is really great. And to be able to send a full team of six to the Olympics, that's what we came here for. 
This age of specialization in gymnastics means that fewer and fewer athletes are able to compete at a world-class level on all six events. Yet you do, and you do it very successfully. What, what has been the key to that success in the all-around competition? Well, my whole career I've been an all-around athlete. Uh, the past couple years I've, I've turned more into a specialist, actually, just because that's what the team needed. But with the couple of injuries that we had, uh, I needed to step in into the all-around and we didn't know that until a couple days before the competition and it, there's a couple guys that, that could have done that so we we have some versatility on the team and great depth so we just have to do whatever whatever is best to, for the team. Well, as I said a little bit earlier you're 27 years old uh, next summer will probably uh, be well it will be your second Olympic Games uh, what do you think the future holds for you? Do you think there will be another Olympic Games? Uh, well, if I can make the team next year to Beijing, that would be the, accomplishing the goal I've had for the last four years, I guess. And uh, after that, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. I might stay around for a little bit. I doubt for another Olympics after that. But I do some coaching now, both boys and girls, and I really enjoy that. And uh, when I get home, I'm going to get back to that. We're actually going on a big trip to Japan in a, in a couple months. So everybody's excited about that. And I also work at RBC with their Athletes Olympian program and that's it's been really good as well so I've got a couple options and I enjoy everything that I do so I'm not worried about it. And here is David on parallel bars and, and we touched on it in that interview Lori but both uh, David and Casey Sandy had to make some compromises in their routines including here on parallel bars in order for Canada to qualify a team to the Olympics. Well over the last year their training their focus has been not on the su on success in this all around competition but their number one priority has been qualifying a full team to the Olympic Games, and that means putting together routines that hit 100% of the time. So now they're competing in this final, and you can't just throw in some of their bigger skills. that Maybe they've been training a little bit in the gym. You have to be training those high-level routines for, for months to be able to safely compete them in a competition like this. Now double pike, steps out on the landing, a solid, strong routine throughout. Deduction on the landing. Slightly better than his qualification score on this apparatus, and David was fifth after the first rotation. Casey Sandy, he is a very consistent gymnast on all six events, which will be important uh, when the Canadian team goes to pick its six men for the Olympic Games next summer. His success here will go a long way in the eyes of the coaches, and he's gained some valuable experience competing six events in the team, and now six events in this final. And he joined this team in the summer and really has fit in nicely. And we, we talked about chemistry with David. That is important. Sometimes it's difficult when you can bring, when you bring in a new member. Um, they have to adjust to the training methods. And Casey Sandy has done an excellent job of really fitting in with, with this team. He's a quiet, hard worker in the gym and well respected by his teammates. And another good event for the Canadian there with a score of 15 points. One, two, five. Now to arguably the most difficult of apparatus for the men, the pommel horse. This is Hiroyuki Tomito of Japan. 26-year-old has won six world medals during his career, and he is certainly the anchor of this Japanese team. He was a silver medalist at the last World Championships, and he won gold in 2005. He was the second highest qualifier for this final. Rough start right here, losing a little bit of momentum, and he's off on his flop sequence on one pommel. Last rotation, we spoke about the fact that the men are competing just 24 hours after the team final, and... We've seen a few competitors look fatigued, and nowhere does it show more than on the pommel horse. Uh, Tamita, especially today, he has looked tired, not only in warm-ups, but on his first event, floor exercise. Uh, the men did compete in that final less than 24 hours ago. That's not usual. Usually they will let the men compete, and then they'll allow the women to compete in the all-around final. Uh, but for some reason in this competition, they've put the men up right away. There's not a lot of recovery time. Disappointing to meet as one of the top athletes here. He could have contended for this all-around title, and now it's going to be a tough fight.
for him to come back strong here and finish the routine out. Try to maintain that A score and keep it as high as possible. He'll lose eight tenths for the fall. You can see it in his face. He's just not here today. He loses his balance during his single pommel work right there. The endurance required on this event is so much more than it used to be in the old code. The athletes are trying to gain as much difficulty as possible, so the routines are much longer. Well, he was a big reason that Japan won the 2004 Olympic men's title, but here in Stuttgart, they finished second behind the Chinese in the men's team event. He also had to take into consideration the emotional drain that a competition like that would have on these athletes, especially for the top teams like China and Japan. Well, you can see the result of the fall there in that score of 14.3. Now, let's go back over to parallel bars. This is Yang Tae Yung's best event, and he was sixth on this apparatus at the last World Championships. He's our leader after rotation number one. He scored a 16 in qualifying, and it was on this event that the judges miscalculated his start value at the last Olympic Games, and that lost him the gold medal at those Olympics. Paul Hom won gold. Yang Tae Yung received the bronze medal. Oh, small mistake there out of his Healy. He wanted to connect it to that element, the front one and a quarter. So there will be a deduction in his B score. But on parallel bars, the athletes don't get connection bonus for the element, so he won't lose as much in his A score for missing that connection. Well, this he was seventh in the all-around at the last World Championships. A lot of people figure that he is one of the top three contenders for the title here in Stuttgart. Uh, there's a score, 15.525. That will keep him in first place after two rotations. But as expected, China's Yang Wei has jumped into third place after the second rotation. The Canadians, they sit sixth and seventh. More gymnastics still to come from the World Championships in Stuttgart in just a moment. This is actually the second time Stuttgart has played host to the World Gymnastics Championship. The last time was back in 1989 when, Lori, you were a competitor here. Yeah, and the Canadian women had a best ever World Championship finish, a sixth place as a team. There's definitely a lot of fond memories in this hall. Well, right now we're watching the high bar routine of Casey Sandy. He was fifth on this apparatus at the 2005 Canadian Championships. So far today, Casey's had two solid events, averaging over a 15, and that's good. Score will be a little bit lower on this event. His difficulty is much lower. Weiler kick to handstand. An endo circle. Not as many of the high-flying release elements we see so from some of the top athletes on high bar. Dismount. Full in, full out in the laid out position. Big step out on the landing. Three tenths deduction there. The 13.7 score you see there will hurt him a bit in the overall standings. And Lori and I are back two weeks from now with the men's and the women's apparatus finals. The top eight athletes on each apparatus will be looking for a world title. But Lori, there aren't any Canadians in that event final. Uh, Kyle Schufelt was expected to compete for Canada on floor, but the Olympic champion broke both his knees before the competition even started. And here is David Kikuchi once again, competing in his fifth world championships. And high bar, a very high risk apparatus. And Lori, we've seen our fair share of falls on release moves at these world championships. Well, fortunately for David, that's his only release element right there. Called a Veronin, vault over. He gets two tenths bonus okay. for that compared to some of the top athletes who are doing release elements that get five and six tenths bonus. The judges are cracking down on some of the pirouetting elements, uh, demanding that the athletes finish them 
close to handstand positions. So some of the Canadians have watered down their routines in that regard, taking out some of those pirouetting elements. David doing a very <laughs> interesting dismount. Quite original, double front with a full out. Uh, no other athletes competing that in this competition. So D skill. A little smirk on his face there. <laughs> uh, slightly higher than his qualification score. And this is American Jonathan Horton, the Olympic all-around champion in Athens, was his teammate Paul Hom. This has kind of been a rebuilding year for the men's American team. Big vault for Jonathan, a handspring double front. There's actually three rotations involved in that and a blind landing. Just takes a hop on the landing. He gets amazing height and power. This athlete is absolutely passionate about his gymnastics. He loves to train, loves to compete, and he hopes that he can do some great things at the Olympic Games next year. And the score for him a little bit more than 16 points. That's going to move him up in the overall standings. Parallel bars are Anton Fulkin's strongest event. This Uzbekistan gymnast was eighth on this apparatus at last year's World Championships, and he is also strong, though, on the other five apparatus, and that's why he finished 14th in the all-around competition at the Worlds a couple of years ago. Tucked bell. Seeing a lot of those double salto elements over the bars. Landing, crashing down on the upper arms. This event... Uh, gives quite a beating to those biceps and upper arms. And you see some of the competitors wearing some protection. Anton opting out to wear the protection. He's toughing it out here. It's just a, uh, you know, a decision by the athlete. Double front dismount. A little bit different there on the dismount. Excellent landing. Well, he qualified for the event final on parallel bars here in Stuttgart. Let's take a look at one of those flight elements. He swings below the bar with a double back above the bar. He has nice execution on his flight elements way above the bar. And that score will move him into first place for the moment with two competitors left to go in this rotation. And one of them is the reigning world champion, China's Yang Wei. Here he is on rings, and he finished fourth on rings at last year's World Championships. So far today, he's been solid on two of his weaker events, floor and pommels. But this is where he can really make a statement and possibly take the lead. It's huge difficulty. An A score of a 7.4. Inverted cross there. Excellent positions in all of his strength elements. Through a translator earlier this week, the Chinese head coach said that that his team has become real students of this new scoring system, trying to eke out every possible point they can. They've done a great job of putting together their routines, not only building strong difficulty, but uh, gaining points where they can and through combinations. On rings, they get the points through combination of strength elements if they are in ascending order. And of course, a huge dismount there. Two twists, a double twisting, double layout, a very strong routine. Earlier we were mentioning that the Chinese held their national championships in June, and that's where they really tested a lot of the routines that we see here at these world championships out, just to see how the judges like them and, and see how they rated against the top Chinese gymnasts. And of course we all know that there's uh, intense competition within that country alone, and that prepares these athletes for this high-level competition. They're competing against their teammates just for a position on the team. Well, Yang Wei will compete on rings in the event final later here in Stuttgart. Probably expecting a score for him of more than 16 points. And you're not going to see many scores higher than that in this all-around final. In fact, you may not see any scores higher than that in the event final for Riggs. Lori, here is Flavius Koshi, who qualified in 12th position for this all-around final. Quick, powerful athlete performing a triple twist. It's a high start value. Seven points for his A score, so a maximum score of 17 can be achieved on this vault if it's executed perfectly. Of course, that B score starts from a 10, and they will deduct for 
knee bends, the step out on the landing. Still, very strong score should be expected here. It's called a Sukahara. He does a half turn onto the vaulting table, explodes into the air. He needs to stall his rotation and gain the height so that he can complete three twists. And he was fifth in the all-around competition at the 2007 European Championships. And there is his score, almost 16 and a half points. Well, no real surprise to see the reigning world champion in this event, Yang Wei, move into first place. One of the favorites, Fabian Hambushin, is nowhere to be seen on the board, but his best events are still to come. It's rotation number four when we return. The top six gymnasts after qualification have now moved over to the vault. Yang Wei was the top qualifier and is our current leader here in Stuttgart. Triple twisting Sukahara. The same big vault we just saw Flavius Koshi perform. Huge start value here. Now Yang Wei built up a nearly two-point lead over Uzbekistan's Anton Fokin, who's currently in second place. And of course, vaulting, we all know, is the big scoring event that will help here. He drifts a little bit to the side. He steps over the line. That's one-tenth deduction plus three-tenths for the side step. But in the air, it's clean, and the amplitude is huge. Well, he hasn't missed so far today. I'm sure that's going to be one of the top vault scores that we're going to see in this all-around final. Yang Wei is in fantastic shape. He's fit and confident right now. And boy, has he already had a great career, 11 world and Olympic medals. And right now, he's still on top. 27 years old. Many Chinese gymnasts have come and gone in that time, but he uh, has something that, that enables him to compete at this high level at a relatively old age. And there is his score, nearly 16 and a half points. Romania's Flavius Koshi was fifth in the all-around competition at this year's European Championships in Romania, by the way, qualified a men's team to next summer's Olympics, finishing in sixth place. Now, as a team, Romania struggled on P-bars during that competition. Flavia scored a 14.65. That is below what he's capable of here with a hit routine. He's in fourth place after three rotations. In the new code of points, the judges are hitting harder for mistakes. A small error receives a one-tenth deduction, medium three-tenths. A large error, five-tenths deduction. Three-tenths deduction on that large step out there. And of course, a fall now is eight-tenths deduction. When most of us think of gymnastics in Romania, we think of the great women's programs. As a team, the men have not been as successful, uh, maybe as the women, but they've had some great individual stars come out. Uh, most uh, recently, Marion Dragulescu, who's won many world titles on events and Olympic medals as well. Uh, unfortunately, at this competition, Marion uh, broke his back during training here in Germany. Um, it, just a slight fracture, and he uh, headed home to recover and hopefully uh, be in shape and healed for the Olympic Games. Well, Flavius Koshi's score uh, was a half point higher than his qualification score on parallel bars. So we're halfway through this men's all-around final, and Canadians David Kikuchi and Casey Sandy have had solid performances on their first three events. Now the Canadians here are on the floor, and here is Casey with his floor exercise. of elements. Fedorachenko, the triple Russian. It's one of his non-gymnastics elements, which is a requirement. Now Casey will return to Penn State for his junior year. He'll be competing in the NCAA. It'll be interesting to see how he juggles his schoolwork, college gymnastics, and then the intense preparation that's needed to come back for the Olympic trials and the selection process these athletes will go through. Is it possible to do all that and try to make this Canadian Olympic team? It will be difficult, but I think it is possible. And hopefully it's one of his goals. His score just below 15 points. Now to Russia's Maxim Diviatoski, the reigning European champion in the men's all-around competition. He also finished fifth at last year's Worlds. 
And Maxime has looked strong through the first rotations and is expected to challenge for a medal. He made a mistake on this event during the team final, put his hands down today. He's on his feet. Excellent job. Russia has struggled in the team competition after losing several other athletes to injuries. His score is 16.1, so that is 0.3 points lower than Yang Wei's score. It's absolutely explosive on that vault. Three rotations in the air. Nice job. Now here is Canadian David Kikuchi on floor. And Laurie, this apparatus has brought Canada a lot of success in the past several years, thanks to Olympic champion Hal Schufeld. They also have some other great floor workers like Brandon O'Neill. And in fact, in last year's World Championships, when Canada qualified for the first time to the team final, they had the number one floor team in that competition. So impressive. Front layout, front layout, half. Canada's national team coach is Edward Yarev. He's done a good job of putting together routines that will score well and will be consistent. He's done a nice job of paying attention to the details. The clean lines, the good landings are important. Here's the warning, heading into his final tumbling pass, a two and a half twist, tiny hop on the landing. Well, as they say in the gymnastics world, another hit for the Canadian, 14.575 for David Kikuchi. It's important to note David's B score is so strong today, he's averaging over a 9-2, that's way up there with top athletes like Fabian Hambushin. Well, here he is on vault, he was the bronze medalist in this event at last year's World Championships. But before we get to that vault, a reminder that we have a season opening special, Hockey Night in Canada event from London, England. It's Anaheim taking on the Kings. Fabian Hambushin. Hasn't made it into the top eight yet, but this is one of his specialties, and I'm sure that once this rotation is done, he will be visible on the radar screen. I think this is where we will see him start to make up some ground. A beautiful Yurchenko two and a half twist. That vault is called the Schufelt, named after Kyle Schufelt from Canada, who first competed it. There is his father, also his coach, Wolfgang. You know, it's so important as an all-around gymnast not to pay attention to the rankings. You know, leaders come and go as they hit their best events or some of the events that score a little bit higher, like the vault. And for Fabian, it's important for him to stay within himself, to concentrate only on his own performances, doing them the best that he can. Because he still has his best events to come. And his best event is high bar. And that's going to move him up in the standings, but through four rotations, Fabian Hambushin still will sit out of the top eight. Two rotations left. Yang Wei build up a two-point lead, and it's a nice pad in this all-around final. Moving up into second, Russia's Maxime Diviatoski, David Kikuchi 20th, Casey Sandy is 23rd. More to come from Stuttgart in a moment. And here is the top qualifier and the leader after four rotations in this men's all-around final, Yang Wei. He was the gold medalist on this event at last year's World Championships. And Lori, he has a hefty lead of a little more than two points. And he sets the bar high on this event. His execution and difficulty sets him apart. Mounting with a peach half to another peach skill. Very popular in this new coat of points. Second double flight element, it's called a piped bell. Yang Wei has a chance to do something big in this competition. He's the current all around champion and no other male has won back to back world titles in consecutive years. What a setup that would be for the Olympic games in less than a year. 
Of course, there's enormous pressure on this Chinese team heading into the Beijing Olympics. In 2004, huge disappointment for the Chinese men's team as they finished fifth there. Well, with routines like this, I think the Chinese will see a lot more success the upcoming Olympics. Extremely long routine for Yang Wei. Showing a lot of difficult skills to really boost that A score. He should get a 7.0 in his A score. That's huge here. And he will compete on this apparatus in the event final later in Stuttgart. You can see why with that routine. Tremendous. Taking a look at his first double salto skill. He goes from his upper arms back to his upper arms. It's so difficult to get the height on a skill like that. Now Yang Wei needs a big score here, which he's capable of because his final event, high bar, is one of his weaker events. Well, the best score recorded today on parallel bars is a little more than 16 points. His score, though, 16.350. That's the best that we've seen on parallel bars today. So, Yang Wei with a nice lead now heading into the sixth and final rotation. Here is Yang Wei's teammate, 24-year-old Liang Fuliang. He was gold medalist on parallel bars at the 2003 Asian Championships. Right now, he sits in sixth place in this men's all-around final. Even if he hits all of his skills, his difficulty level is much lower than Yang Wei. Around a 6.2 versus the 7 that we saw from Yang Wei. There's that peach element into a giant full. A piked bell. Nice job of opening in the hips at the end of that piked bell. Not a requirement, but it certain, certainly shows a little bit of flair. Shows that the athlete has that extra height. Kicking out that tucked bell. And the dismount, double pike. Shorter routine, that means less difficulty. Well, he finished seventh in this all-around competition at the 2000 and five world championships but had a very disappointing worlds last year and did not qualify for the all-around final or for an event final his score 15.525 for liang fuliang of china european champion maxime divyatoski of russia has the best chance of any of these gymnasts of catching yang wei right now he was two points behind the Chinese champion, but Lori, that's a lot of ground to make up. Absolutely a lot of ground, but this is a great event for him. He has the ability to score high here when he hits. Peach to handstand. Peach half. A little out of control there. He's got a big seal coming up here. It's the piked bell, and oh my goodness. Whoa, Slips what? right through the bars. Oh, looks like he's hurt himself, judging by the look on his face there. Absolutely hurt his foot when he came crashing down between the bars. He meant to catch the bars with those upper arms. He put his arms out too late. Seems to be testing his left foot ankle. He's looking at his coach on the sideline there. Trying to determine whether or not he can complete this routine. Now, doing the routine itself shouldn't be the difficulty. It will be the dismount, and he's choosing not to finish the routine. That will hugely affect his score here. Well, Lori, what would his options be to get back on the bar and then just uh, do a very simple uh, dismount? Or? He could do that, but if he feels that this foot is really injured, he wouldn't want to take uh, the chance of hurting it further and then possibly not being in shape and, and ready for the Olympics. Well, that's that's the end of his day right there. Absolutely. He'll score a 3.725, unfortunate for Maxime Diviatoski of Russia. Korea's Kim Dae-yung is the reigning Olympic silver medalist in the all-around competition. He struggled on pommel and on high bar during qualification where he finished 17th, but this is his best event floor. And a Korean man has never won a world all-around medal. A strong day so far.
Opened with a tuck double. Second tumbling pass is a laid out. Thomas. And he will do four tumbling passes back to back. Seeing more and more tumbling from the men. The women as well. Because of this new code of points, the athletes are trying to gain as much difficulty as possible. And Kim Dae-yoon came into this fifth rotation sitting in eighth place. So he's in a good position here for a medal. And you mentioned off the top that he qualified to this competition 17th. And uh, something that he did at the Olympic Games, he qualified fairly low what we thought he would be out of the picture and then came back so strong and won the silver medal so anything is possible with this athlete finishing up big with a full in back out what a strong routine one of the best today and this is the highest score we've seen so far in this event it will move him into second place gangway extends his lead over the rest of the field fabian hamushin also makes a leap up the standings with one rotation left Less than half a point separates second and sixth place. Now to the final rotation of the men's all-around competition. These 24 gymnasts, including Canadian David Kikuchi, have one last chance to move up in the standings. Uh, just to give you a picture of how things stand, China's Yang Wei has a huge lead of three and a half points. The fight looks like it's for second and third place. Less than half a point separate second and sixth place. And this is David's final event of the day, and it's his best. A little quick out of some of his strength elements there. David had the top result for the Canadian team in qualifying on this event. Make sure that he is holding those strength elements for at least two seconds or he won't get credit for them. Nice control and his handstand work. Dismount coming up here. Full twisting, double layout. Excellent job on the landing. 14.9, the final score of the day for Fall River, Nova Scotia's David Kikuchi. Fabian Hambushin made a run at the leaders during the last rotation. He currently sits tied for sixth place, well back of the man in first place, China's Yang Wei. But Fabian owns this event, Lori. Last Worlds, he had a chance for a medal, but he watered down his high bar routine to make sure that he at least got the bronze medal. It was that skill right there. This time, he's going for it. Stoop through to a full right into a Veronin. So two more big release elements in combination here. Straight to Kotchev, Stroud to Kotchev. He is on today. Some of the biggest difficulty in the competition. Of course, he's under intense pressure here, and anything can happen on high bar. Dismount, double twisting, double layout. Hits the landing, hits the routine. What energy in this building today. The crowd just on the edge of their seat with every move he made on the high bar. What a great feeling this is when you know you've laid it on the line. He went for all of his difficulty this time around in this all-around competition, going for the Coleman, one of the most difficult release elements on high bar. Wow, look at that score. 16.050, the highest score of the afternoon, and that will move him ahead of Kim Dae-yung and into the lead with a couple of great gymnasts, though, left to come. Here is our second to last competitor, Hisashi Mitsutori. And the Japanese gymnast was in fourth place after the last rotation. He's qualified for the event final in high bar, so he is capable of putting up some really big numbers here. He has a shot at another all-around medal. He won the silver in 2005. His teammate, one of the favorites today here, Yuki Tomita, who just has not been on his game today, is out of medal contention. Shows the depth of this Japanese team. And your second guy has a chance of winning a medal here. Huge laid out Kovacs. There's the Coleman. Again, throwing a risky routine. 
One and a half twisting. Flight element called a Rybalco. Now, originally, Mizutori was the alternate to this team. And Kashima broke his hand during training here in Germany. He stepped in for the team, and now he has a chance to win a world championship all-around medal here. Dismounting with a double twisting, double layout, steps out on the landing. He's going to need more than 15 points to move ahead of Germany's Fabian Havbushin. Will that be enough? Right now, there is Fabian, your leader. The difficulty was strong in this routine, starting with this laid-out Kovacs. He has several huge flight elements, as well as some twisting elements in there as well. But of course, he took a big deduction on the landing of his dismount. That could hurt, hurt his score. Looking for a score of a little more than 15 points to move Hisashi Mitsutori into the lead. Not quite enough, so that's going to leave him in second place. So Hambushin will finish no lower than second. Mitsutori no lower than third. Coming up next, the final gymnast of the day. The reigning world all-around champion, Yang Wei, with a three-and-a-half-point lead on Hambushin heading into this final rotation. So really, Laurie, all he has to do is have a clean routine because that is an enormous lead. Well, he needs that lead here because this is his weakest event. But because he's had three scores over a 16 today, no other gymnast has had that. He has the lead. Oh! oh. Major slip here. As you said, it, it's one of his weaker events, uh, his weakest, in fact, but no one expected this. Take a look at his left hand. He was trying to reach out and re grasp the bar. He slips. His coach takes a dive to try to save their star athlete from injury here. So close to the finish line for Yang Wei. Now he, he's going to need a score of a little more than 12 points to hold on to the gold medal. And that is still doable here if he can complete this routine without any more disasters. See his coach really stepping in there, being careful. the dismount. Double twisting, double layout, sticks the landing he knows. Right now, every tenth counts. Great recovery by the reigning world all-around champion. And Fabian Hambushin looks on, wondering if that slip by Yang Wei will mean he has the gold medal. But you've got to think that he had enough in that routine to score what he needs, and that's more than 12 points. Definitely a frightful moment there for the reigning world champion. Certainly don't want to see a major injury at this point. His Chinese teammates look pretty relaxed. Must be feeling confident as they wait for the scores. Judges tabulating the score. They'll take eight tenths off for the fall. Plus, he will lose credit ah, in the eighth score. It. 13.600, so that is more than enough. So, Yang Wei wins back-to-back -back men's all-around titles. Germany's Fabian Hambushin takes the silver, while Japan's Hisashi Mitsutori wins the bronze. Canadian's David Kikuchi is 20th. Casey Sandy winds up 23rd. The second World Championship all-around final for David Kikuchi. And David, what will you take from this experience? Uh, well, it's just a, a great a great thing that I got to qualify and compete here and with Casey as well And we just were trying to move up a little bit in the standings and uh, for us The most important thing was the team competition. We came in we got we got our goal accomplished And then just to qualify here was was good and I had fun out there once again You were consistent across six events. That's what you're known for. How important was that in this competition? Uh, well, it was pretty important because the focus wasn't as high we we had spent like three years uh, just for the competition a few days ago and just a couple days getting ready for this one. Uh, but 
but even through that I was able to hit my routines. I was really happy with the first four events. They went a little better even than the first day and then a little struggle on pommels and rings wasn't quite my best, but it was still not too bad, so I was happy with it. For Fabian Hambushin, he moves up one spot from last year's World Championships when he won a bronze medal. The German star wins the silver here at home in Germany in 2007. Once again, this medal came down to your performance on the high bar. When in that routine did you know that this medal was yours? Uh, before this moment, so because this routine is so difficult that you have to concentrate on each element and well, I just felt at this moment, okay, you got it, that's it. Yang wins this battle between these respectful rivals. The medals are next. There is the two-time world all-around champion from China, Yang Wei, the first-time laureate in men's gymnastics history that we've had a back-to-back -back winner of the title. Yang Wei has taken this sport to another level, not only with his difficulty, but with his technical expertise and finesse as well. Even with a fall in the final event, he accomplished something historical here and is now in good position to win the first Olympic all-around title since Li Xiaoshong of 1996. And Fabian Hambushin of Germany takes silver. Hisashi Mitsutori of Japan bronze. An interesting lorry that these were the nations also on the podium in the men's team final. Now downtown in Stuttgart at the Metal Plaza, 15-year-old Sean Johnson of the U.S. becomes the fourth American to win the women's all-around title. At such a young age, Sean Johnson competed like a seasoned veteran here. She fought for landings many others would fall on. Her ferocity paid off, and she's the best in the world, the new queen of our sport. Later tonight on CBC Sports Weekend, it's quarterfinal soccer action. The 2007 Women's World Cup of Soccer continues from China. Next Saturday, Hockey Night in Canada brings you a season opening special from London, England, as the Anaheim Ducks face the Los Angeles Kings. It all starts at noon Eastern. And then it's a triple header weekend on the CFL on CBC, starting in Montreal, moving to Winnipeg, and winding up in Vancouver. Vancouver. And two weeks from today, we have our final installment from Germany. It's the men's and women's apparatus finals. But today, the women's all-around title changes hands while the men stays in China for one more year. That's it from Stuttgart.